Marinero, the sick podcast, and another football extravaganza with the best of the best from the NFL Network Insider Extraordinaire, Ian Rappaport. How are you? What's going on, man? How are you? It's, uh, it's, it's all good, man. It's good to see you again. Special thanks to Adam Rank, of course, our fantasy football expert who filled in for me over the past couple of weeks. Did Much a great job, by the way. Just seamless. I didn't even know you were gone. Honestly. Ah, geez. I'm, I'm happy to hear that, and I'm not. <laughs> I, I hope he did well, but I hope he didn't do too well because I don't want to lose my job here. But hey, uh, thanks for doing this, man. Always a pleasure. Uh, where do we start? Um, it was a week, uh, sir, you know, with all kinds of controversy and Urban Meyer. I mean, where do you see this going? Uh, are you surprised that he wasn't relieved of his duties? Yes or no, and why? No, I mean, I never heard that he was really like in trouble as far as he might lose his job. I mean, maybe he was. I just I had never heard that. Uh, I, now, I know owner Shad Khan was not happy. I know that, you know, the statement he put out was, I think, appropriately harsh. I mean, you rarely see an owner kind of rebuke a sitting head coach like that. Let him know that he's not happy. Let him know he's got to re-earn the trust. I mean, all these things, we we've never really seen that. I also... Frankly, can't remember a situation where a head coach hasn't flown home with the team. I mean, maybe it happened and we were not aware of it, but I just can't remember one that that ever happening. So there was some some new ground that was made, some some uh, new territory that was uh, you know crossed over here. But I think for the Jaguars, if they would win some games, then I think this probably all goes away. If you know they continue winless and looking real bad, then could go the wrong way. It was definitely a situation to keep monitoring. I'll say that. What do you think of how the locker room is right now? I mean, we, we read various reports and stuff like that, that it seems like um, he doesn't have the respect that you would think he would have going into the season. Uh, I don't know if it's because he lost it now or he didn't have it to begin with once he showed up, but you know, some coaches are great in college football. They just don't seem to pan out in the national football league. I know it's still very early on in his tenure. We're only talking about four games in. But can the National Football League be too big of an animal to handle for Urban Meyer? Well, I mean, you know, there is a reason that that college coaches haven't been successful. And to me, the biggest reason is a lot of times the most successful college coaches are the best recruiters. And, and Urban Meyer is a great recruiter. I mean, Ohio State had endless five-star guys. And then you get to the NFL where that doesn't work and it doesn't matter. And you have to coach, coach your coaches and all of that. And then it gets a little more difficult. So maybe that's a reason, uh, you know, we knew the Jaguars were not going to be good. So I think this is not like a total surprise, but the, you know, the various issues that he's had hiring a coach and then having a strength coach and having to fire him due to his racist past, um, you know, this latest issue. I mean, there's, there's been some things, um, you know, the Tim Tebow experiment, like, was that, was that worth it? Was that for any, you know, so um, I think, you know, if the players start winning, they'll be okay. But if they start losing, it's, this is going to get even bigger. The sick podcast is brought to you by Essentia, the world's only natural memory foam mattress. Go to my slash sick pod and use code sick pod for a free pillow with your purchase. Essentia beyond organic sleep. All right. Uh, Jalen Smith to green Bay update. Yeah, the deal is done. Um, probably not going to play this week. I mean, he didn't practice today. He's only going to get a Friday before the game. So, you know, not a total surprise that he's probably not going to play. But, you know, this is one where a lot of teams are interested. Um, the salary, it's only $770,000 because, you know, the Cowboys are basically paying most of the freight. So um, I think that's, you know, it was an easy decision for the Packers. And, you know, I kind of didn't realize this, but the relationship between him and Packers coach Matt LaFleur is a really strong one. They were together at uh, Notre Dame. They struck up a friendship. They stayed in touch and stayed close. Um, you know, this is all kind of interesting and explains why he chose Green Bay over a team like the Panthers. I think he will help them. Uh, you know, with the Cowboys, he was kind of losing his starting job. Um, so that's probably why that happened. But I do think a new location could end up being what he needs. Speaking of Green Bay, they're going to be in Cincinnati on Sunday at 1 o'clock. They both have records of 3-1. and one. I guess for Green Bay, we expected that, that they would. Um, did you expect 3-1 and one for Cincinnati after four games? No, um, 
but they deserve it. Like I, I'm, like I don't know. Maybe maybe this is a fluke, and maybe Rogers drops fifty on their heads. But the defense has been playing well. Lou Anarumo has done a really nice job. They kind of beefed up in free agency the last couple of years. Got some players. They drafted pretty well. Um, they they've been really good on defense. And then you know, offensively, Joe Burrow is really good. And when you have one of the bright young stars of this game as your quarterback. And he is a good dude. He's a tough dude. He can kind of lead them through the wilderness a little bit um, where they were on Thursday night. Like, this is a team that could win. You know, I know it's the Bengals, but they really are a team that looks like they can end up being pretty good. If you're a Bengals fan going back to uh, Boomer Esiason or whoever it was, you can pick up your Bengals jersey at sportbuffshop.com for all of your officially licensed sports apparel and more. And even our sick merch, of course, and you can use code SICK15 for 15% off on all of their items. Moving right along, Gilmore to Carolina. How did that whole thing come to fruition? Yeah, interesting one because, you know, I couldn't, I looked at the Patriots situation with Stefan Gilmore from all angles and I couldn't figure out an end game. He was not going to play without a raise. They were not going to give him a raise until they could show he's healthy. But he wasn't going to show he's healthy until he got a raise. And I just... I went over it a million times. I couldn't figure out a way it ended. And that's why, like, you know, when the news came out there parting ways with him, I was kind of like, okay, that actually makes sense. That's like a proper ending. Uh, And then what you found out was that, you know, the Patriots kind of made it public to see if anybody would jump in for a trade. And the Carolina Panthers did. It was only a, you know, 20, 23, six round pick. Not a huge deal, obviously. Um, But they pay the salary and they have Uh to do so without seeing whether or not he's healthy. That's kind of a big deal. And that's why there was really limited interest in a possible trade because you didn't know if he was going to be healthy or not. There was a report that Tom Brady and uh, Bill Belichick actually had a sit down. That's um, true. After the game. Is that correct? Is there anything that has come out of that very private meeting that maybe we've heard? No, I, I think the main thing is that they like each other and have respect for each other. You know, they were never best friends when they were with the Patriots, but that was the most successful professional relationship in history and probably in sports history, right? Like they, they've accomplished so much together. They've won so much. There's so much mutual respect. You and I will be better than that when all is said and done. You'll see. You think how many, how many super right right now we have combined between the two of us, zero Super Bowl. So I I have faith. Do you? Yeah. All right. I'm with you then. (laughs) Tell me. Um, you know, but but I was, I don't know, like I was, it, it was kind of nice to hear that. Like I, I would have been fine, and I think we all would have been fine if yeah. we didn't have anything. They just shook hands and that was it. But, you know, everybody spent the whole week talking about how, like, oh, it's just another game. Patriots people are wired differently. They're going to be focused on just the game. Like, get out of here. Like, no way. They were focused on personal because it meant something to them. That is yeah. okay. Uh, I thought that was a really cool thing. Do you know why Calvin Ridley is not making the trip to London? Uh, officially, it is a personal matter. I know the team didn't uh, didn't disclose any of the details, uh, kind of out of respect for him. I will keep it like that, um, and we will see how long it ends up lasting. But obviously, you know, a significant blow for the Atlanta Falcons. He's one of their best players and certainly their best player on offense. Zach Wilson. Uh, I don't think too many people expected the Jets to beat the Titans, but they did. Have you seen enough of Zach Wilson to say this guy's the real deal? Uh, I know it's a short sample size. Yeah. Have you though? No. Um, but what you know, what you if you're a Jets fan, what you really hope is to see enough moments where you're like, all right, by the end of this year, I will know that this guy's my franchise guy. Like, let's say you were a Bengals fan last year. Like Joe Burrow came out had some amazing moments. You're like, all right, like when he gets healthy, this is my guy. And I think that's what the Jets want. Last week, there was some moments where you were like, the Jets are going to end up being okay because this guy can really ball. He can be accurate. He's elusive. He's a tough dude. Like there was a lot of things to like. Um, So I think it's certainly headed in the right direction for the Jets. Last question. The three and one Bills go to Arrowhead to take on the two and two Kansas City Chiefs Sunday night, 8 20 p.m. Will the Chiefs go under 500 or will they win a huge game and never look back the rest of the way? Great question. Um, 
I think it's going to sort of depend on which Bills team we've seen. They've been a little up and down this year, but last week I thought it was really good. X factor here is Josh Gordon. Like He's going to play. He'll have a couple packages. It is going to be fascinating because apparently he looks great. He's 230 pounds. You wouldn't know he's 31 years old. He's at like 7.5% body fat. Like He looks great. Doesn't know all the plays, but it looks great. Does Gordon come in there and make a big difference and kind of steal things? That, I think, is going to be what's really going to be really fun to watch. 7% body fat. Just like you I, and me. I, I Unfortunately, I have two sevens. <laughs> Always a pleasure, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right, man. Look forward to it. Take care. Ian Rappaport of the NFL Network. I love this guy. From one guy I love to another guy that I love. But before I get to Adam Rank, a little Cherry River Heart Seltzer, only 90 calories, natural flavors, no preservatives. Now available in Quebec grocery stores and the beer store. Hold on a second. I needed a big sip. It's time for Adam. Fantasy Ranks with Adam Rank. Thank you, my man, for filling in. There's only one problem. Ian Rappaport yeah. tells me you are too good. I'm going to lose no. my job over this. He's too kind. He's just backing up his uh, fellow employee. It was uh, it was awesome to talk to Ian, though. Like, he's a busy person. We see, like, you see the video. When you take a break to do, like, a, an ad read, you can see Ian's working the phone. There's yeah, some I angle see that. that he's yeah. gotta, he's, there's some angle that he's got to be following up on. There's a reason why he's the best in the business. So it was a pleasure to uh, to fill in for you last week. And uh, again, it's Pete, you make it look so easy. It's definitely not. Well, thank you for that. All right, Justin Fields. I don't know who's happier, you or him, but he's finally the starter with the Chicago Bears. How do you feel about it? You know what? I don't think he was happy at all. His parents asked him to go out to dinner on Tuesday night. He obviously felt I saw that. ahead of everybody else. He's like, no, nah, I'm going to, I'm going to go read. I'm going to go uh, watch tape. And that's pretty much what we get out of him. And you know, I don't want to, I don't want to use this as an opportunity to, to bury the, the previous guy because Mitch Trubisky came in and tried his hardest and he was, he, he did it. He was a great teammate. He was a great person. He's a great person. So I don't think that's really important, but the difference that you see in leadership style between Justin Fields and Mitch Trubisky, I think the players have bought in. I think everybody in the entire organization has bought in. Matt Nagy was probably the final holdout, but even he at some point, and I don't care who had to convince him or what it was, Justin Fields is the starting quarterback. And I think we're going to see a different Bears team. We saw a little glimpse of it against the Detroit Lions. But even then, yeah. it was like the, it was like the last day of vacation. You really, you're enjoying it, but you knew it wasn't possibly going to last forever. But now that we know that it's a permanent thing, we can move forward. And I think that uh, this Bears team is going to benefit. Start him or sit him for this week. Who do you got? What do you got? Well, I think that, you know, the previous week was very difficult to find quarterbacks that, you know, that you were really enthusiastic about starting. This week is kind of the opposite. I think that outside of basically Ben Roethlisberger or Drew Locke, I could make a case for any quarterback to start. Even Matt Ryan, who finally had a breakout game last week, has a tough matchup against the Jets, but I think that we now have confidence in him and this Arthur Smith offense that it's moving forward. Even with a tough match, I, uh, the Jets have been surprisingly great against quarterbacks, but I still feel good about Matthew Stafford. I think the biggest issue is what do you do with a player like Sam Darnold, who you might have picked up off the waiver wire at some point this season, and now what do we do? He's a top-five fantasy quarterback, and we've seen him and his ability to run the football. Now, if you look at what happened last week against Dallas, he had some design runs that he took into the house for a touchdown. But even when Christian McCaffrey was playing, he was doing read options with CMC holding on to the ball and scampering into the end zone. So to me, I think we're at a point now where Sam Darnold is a quarterback that you need to start each and every week. And unless you have Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes or somebody like that, it's an obvious, obvious start to go with Sam Darnold. All right. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, give me your top scoring players at each position. Well, I think that Aaron Rodgers is one. You guys, you and Ian were talking about the Cincinnati Bengals, whether they're a fluke or not. I thought coming into this season, the Bengals were going to have one of the more exciting offenses in the NFL, and it's really started to work out that way. We really do like what we're seeing out of the Cincinnati Bengals, despite the fact 
that T. Higgins has been hurt. They've still found a way to work in C.J. Uzama. Uh, Jamar Chase has been very good. It turns out he can catch the football. So I think Aaron Rodgers has probably the top week for any quarterback because Joe Burrow is going to be putting the pressure on him. I think this is going to end up being one of the highest scoring games of the weekend. I know Cash is not going to be with us today. I'm not giving any recommendation to how you spend your money. You I'm want to know why saying, he's not with us today? Why is that? Because he's made so much money, he's spending it. Yeah. He's out, you know, he's living the high life. That's what you do. Like, after a while, you just become do, too big for it. It's like when Eddie Murphy left the Saturday Night Live. He started making movies. Yeah. Like, I don't need to do this anymore. And I know I went way back with Eddie Murphy, but I thought it was the most, the most uh, appropriate example. Yeah, but actually, I, I thought it was delirious. Yeah, there you go. I, uh, I I was gonna get a little bit raw with it, but it's okay. I'm uh, I'm gonna go out and say that Aaron Rodgers, Joe Burrow, two of the top quarterbacks this week. I think for the running backs, Derrick Henry is a player that to me has really been multifaceted. He's out touching his his his. Everybody was worried about regression with Derrick Henry coming into this year, but now he's out touching. He's he's on pace to have more touches than he had last year. And a big, big reason why is that he catches the football now. They're using him in the passing attack, which yeah. is not fair. It's like if a shark somehow learned to use nunchucks. It's like, I'm already at a disadvantage being out here in the water, but now this shark is using some nunchucks. That's not fair. That's the way it's like with Derrick Henry. So I think that he's going to end up being my top running back. Wide receiver position, obviously, if I like – if I like uh, Aaron Rodgers, I'm going to go Devontae Adams is going to be very good as well. But I think this is a weekend for Stephon Diggs to really step up. He's got a great matchup this week against the Kansas City Chiefs, who, you know, you and Ian, Rapp you, you and Ian talked about the possibility yeah. of the Chiefs falling to two and three. A big yeah. reason why is the defense. Well, part of the reason why is Clyde Edwards Hilaire didn't hold on to a football. Um, but in any event, there's a. Uh, there's a there's a deficiency defensively. So I think that the Bills are going to be able to put up some points. I think Stephon Diggs goes out there, puts up a huge, huge performance. Travis Kelsey would end up being your top tight end. But we'll say Dallas Goddard is going to be very good this week. One of the big reasons why these coaches watch tape. They saw what Dallas was able to do against the Carolina Panthers with their tight ends. Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz are going to be very good plays for the Philadelphia Eagles this week. In Cash's absence, let's see if we can make everyone some cash. Money. Money, 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 money. Hold on. It's time for Sick Bits. Brought to you by MyBookie. Yeah, you can place your bets on MyBookie and go to mybookie.ag slash the sick podcast and use code SICKPICKS to double your deposit. Bet, win, get paid. Is there a game, my man? Actually, hold on a second. I don't want to ask you right away because right. I'm scared that you're going to take my pick. Oh, okay. Do your Tennessee Listen. over Jacksonville. Why not? Jacksonville, too many distractions. They don't take their coach seriously. They probably want him fired. They're not going to play for him. Tennessee by 10. I love that pick. I'm saying this as a football analyst. I am not recommending how you spend your money or anything like that. But as a football analyst, if you're telling me or asking me a question of who's going to win between the Chicago Bears and the Las Vegas Raiders, I think the Bears are going to surprise a lot of people this week. I think that with Bill Lazor having another opportunity to call the plays for the Chicago Bears, we're going to see an open playbook. Last week, Justin Fields was five of six on passes of over 20 air yards. That's insane. So the Raiders, famously under Al Davis, loved the vertical game. I think we're going to see a lot of that out of the Chicago Bears. I think that they end up going to Las Vegas and winning that game outright. I'm not recommending anything. I'm just saying as a fantasy observer and a football analyst, I am picking the Bears to win that game outright. He, he's got the Bears to win the game. I got Tennessee Titans to win the game. If Cash was here, he'd tell you to put uh, two units on yours. Five units on mine. I still have no idea what that means. But anyway, he'll probably be back next week to tell us. I hope so. He's one of the best. Like, you get all the best people and then me. Uh, no, no, no. You're... Man. Cash is the best at what I do. And then I'm like, yeah, then there's rank. He's okay. I saw what we pay you. You have to be the best because you're making <laughs> a lot of money. Hey, I love having you, and I can't wait to talk to you again. Enjoy the football this weekend. Cheers, bud. 
Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. And yep. thanks for allowing me the opportunity last week. You're very welcome. Marinero, the sick podcast. Cheers. Enjoy your football.